Starting. Starting up. We're start. We're live. We're on the air. We're here. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Friday's show. It's Friday, TGIF, everybody. Welcome to the show today. It's uh, April 13th, 2018, uh, almost halfway through the month. Oh, man, unbelievable. Uh, kind of a yucky day here where I am, uh, Creston, British Columbia. Uh, it started gorgeous, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. Absolutely wonderful. Now, as the day wears on, the clouds are building, the clouds are building. We've got some intermittent showers forecast for later today. Hit a high of about 50 today uh, when the sun was out for a while. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It's spring and uh, keeps the dust down, washes the uh, grit off the roadways because uh, we have to spray dirt on the road when the, we get snow around here. And so now the roads are all covered with this stuff. And the, the uh, street sweepers have started the show uh, on the main drags anyway. And they're uh, picking up all that dirt and piling it back up to use it next year. And it'll be uh, it'll be our streets turn eventually, but I'm on a little little dead end cul-de-sac here, so not much traffic to worry about here. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're going to have a nice weekend this weekend. Uh, it's been a great week this week. Had a lot of fun on last night's shows. We did uh, trivia last night. I've got a trivia question for you guys today. I put one together for today's show. Uh, we'll do that a little bit later, and uh, I'll just talk about some other stuff, cruising, whatever have you. If you're new to the channel, if you've never been here before, welcome to this show, Traveling with Bruce. I'm on, I'm on the air five days a week, Monday to Friday and Saturdays. Uh, Monday to Friday, five o'clock Eastern time, like right now. Tuesdays, Thursdays, I put in a second show. I put in an eight o'clock Eastern time show on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Saturdays, two in the afternoon, two in the afternoon Eastern time, I'm on the air. And we talk about cruise ships, cruise ship vacations, going on holidays, um, deals, uh, news from the cruise industry, events, uh, good news, bad news, and everything in between. What a week this week. We've been talking about the Norwegian sun all week long. What a story that is. Uh, getting more and more details out as time goes by. Uh, also following the MSC um, Armonia uh, slow, slow motion crash into the uh, pier in Roatan. Unbelievable. Uh, what was going on there? Apparently the ship is okay. Uh, it's in Cozumel right now, today. Um, the, uh, the ship continues on its journeys, but it's scuffed up on both sides of the uh, hull. And... Uh, you know, they'll eventually paint it up and pretty it up. But it's headed back to Havana when it finishes this particular cruise because it's based out of Havana because uh, MSC is a Swiss-based private company. And so their ships, uh, no problem coming in out of Havana and even using Havana as a home port. And so uh, that's why most Americans have never heard of the Ar Ar Armania, the MSC Armania. What sh what, who's that? Yep, uh, I didn't even know that. Sh I didn't know that name when I heard it myself. and. Uh, did some digging and found out, oh, they're running it out of my out of uh, Havana for uh, Caribbean cruises. Who knew? Anyway, so that news of the week came out. The, the Norwegian Sun keeps coming out. It goes on its next cruise on the nineteenth of uh, of this month. So that's next week. We'll be watching that cruise very closely when it goes from Seattle all the way down through the Panama Canal back to uh, Port Canaveral. And we'll just see what kind of a cruise that is. Uh, are there any construction workers going to be on that cruise? <laughs> I'll tell you what a story. And the compensation thing is, uh, last I've heard now, is 100% credit towards a future cruise on Norwegian uh, for the folks that were on the Panama Canal cruise. That was March 15th to 31, 16-day cruise. That was a real bad one. Um, the, uh, the passengers are saying, we just want our cash refund. Just give us our money back. We want to go on another cruise line. We, we don't want to go on a free cruise with Norwegian. And it's not a free cruise anyway. The deal is a 100% credit only on the base fare paid by the passengers of the uh, cruise on uh, the, through the Panama Canal. So if you paid uh, $2,000 a person for a balcony uh, or 1800 bucks or whatever you paid for it, uh, plus taxes and fees and tipping and any other charges and your airfare to get to Miami and your airfare to get home from LA and hotels before and after the all, none of that's included. The only thing you're getting back, you're not even getting it back. The only thing you're getting is a $2,000 credit towards a future cruise, which means you got to pay port charges on the next cruise. 
you got to figure out how to get there. Tax tips and everything will be additional. And, you know, so you're out a lot of money. Sometimes the fare is only like half to 60% of what you're paying for the whole package. So someone coming up with two grand for a $2,000 cruise, they might be looking at a $3,000 expense or more because it depends how far away from the ship you are, whether you're driving or whether you're flying. Not good. These folks just want a refund. They want their money back. Uh, if if Holland America, if Holland America, if had Norwegian just stepped up right at the beginning, said their mea culpas, said sorry, uh, and, and came up with a you know something like a uh, a fifty percent cash refund plus a one hundred percent credit towards another cruise, that might have that might have made it, that might have done it. But now they've just these folks are digging in now. They're digging in and they're going to go after these guys on the PR relations. Big time. They're now contacting their members of Congress. They're going after them. They started with the media and they're continuing on. Now, the folks who were on the cruise just before the Panama cruise, that would have been uh, March 9th to 16th for that one week. That was a Western Caribbean cruise. They're being offered 50% uh, cruise credit. So Norwegian is, is not offering a dime of cash to anyone for any of this. They want to only offer cruise credits against future cruises and deep down, they have to know that a third of them might take it, maybe a quarter, even if half the passengers ultimately take the deal because that's all they can get. I don't even know if half of those will actually take a cruise. So what's the skin off of Norwegian? That's why these folks are fighting because uh, uh, a contract was really broken here, a, a trust between passenger and, uh, and a cruise line. And some of these folks were talking about, they're not like, taking a cruise for the first time in their lives. These were lifelong Norwegian fans, lati you know, Latitude high members, high-end members of the Latitude Club, and uh, they've just been betrayed badly by uh, Norwegian. It's just, it's just pathetic. The PR department over there has just got to be shaking their heads going, man, this is getting so bad. Why can't we make this go away? Well, I tell you why, because you're trying to chintz your way out and the, the Norwegian people have been going to the media saying, we're offering them a free cruise. We're being great. We're great guys. We're giving them a free cruise. They're trying to win the public relations battle by hoodwinking the rest of the public who doesn't understand. There isn't, it isn't just the fare. It's everything on top of the fare you have to pay to really take a cruise. And that's why this channel exists. Because if you're new to cruising, you should be watching us here, talking to, uh, watching me talk to my gang over here because we give you the straight goods on what it really costs to take a cruise and what's really involved. But despite it all, uh, cruising is a great bargain compared to uh, any other form of vacation for what you're getting here. But uh, the cruise lines, sometimes they have to step up and admit they've screwed up. And, uh, you know, when, when uh, there's a problem in Las Vegas at a hotel there, the hotel tries to make it right. Uh, if there's a problem in, uh, you know, in uh, Los Angeles uh, with Disneyland, they, they try to make it right. Uh, if there's a problem with Universal Studios in Orlando, they try to make it right. Norwegian, you got to make it right. Uh, you just, you just, you're not fooling these people and you just made them mad and they're suffering from health issues. This isn't like an inconvenience factor that you guys have been trying to claim it is. There's nothing inconvenient about having to go to a doctor and be prescribed pain medication because the cough you have is so bad and persistent that it is painful now because if you cough for a week with a cold that's one thing but if you have an involuntary nasty cough it now affects your entire body and it's just debilitating and people are on pain medication because of the coughing let alone the actual symptoms of the cough region you got to make it right okay that's my little rant uh the rest of you welcome <laughs> all my newbies welcome uh when i went off the air last night uh with travel trivia oh and by the way debbie manuel way to go you nailed it with tokyo you were right on it i love it it's fantastic uh, i went off the air last night we had 1728 uh, subscribers that tokyo thing is an inside joke just so you know uh, right now, 1,047 subscribers. We've added 19 more subscribers since last night. That's more than 1% growth of the channel. Not bad for 24 hours. Thank you, all new joiners. I hope some of you are here watching. If you are, say hi to me. 
uh, just type in, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature going to be today? If you're a new cruiser or, or you're an experienced cruiser, if you're a newbie, tell us. I haven't been on a cruise before or going on my first cruise. If you're going on your first cruise, tell us uh, what's the name of the ship you're going on and where are you headed? You headed to Caribbean or going to Mediterranean, doing a transatlantic? Uh, the folks here will give you all kinds of advice and, and ask anything you want about going on a cruise. We'll be more than happy to help you. Yeah, 1747 can't believe it. It's just incredible. Uh, still not monetized, by the way, those of you who want to know. Uh, and, and also for you newbies out there, just so you do know, I am not paid by the cruise business to be here. I'm not a spokesperson. I'm not a shill. I'm not a plant. <laughs> I'm not a travel agent. I don't get paid by anyone to be here. The only people that pay me to be here are you guys, the, the viewers. Because my channel on YouTube is not monetized at the moment. It hasn't been monetized since uh, February the 20th when they revamped their whole thing. And I'm still in review. My channel is in review, even though it qualifies for commercials, commercial monetization. It's qualified since February the 20th. Today is April the 13th. Next week, it's two months, not a dime from YouTube. So YouTube isn't paying me. They're paying me nada. Actually, I'm paying them. I actually make them money because whenever I get a super chat contribution coming to me, they get a percentage of that. So I actually make them money by doing what I'm doing, but I have to work, you know, doing what I do for free on everything else. I just saw a super chat come in actually for $5. Um so the only, the only income I have are from my viewers who give me a super chat donation, which is kind of like a tip jar. Uh, or uh, 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 also, if you donate $10 or more, you gift me $10 through super chat, I will gift you one of these guys here or one of these guys over here. I have sports necklaces and sport medallions, uh, tons of them. I've talked about them for weeks, and I'm not going to bore the rest of you about it. However, something new happened this week. Big week for me. Big week for the channel. I've got swag. Uh, I now have a, uh, a, uh, an internet uh, store, an online store through Redbubble of uh, T-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, uh, pillows, uh, all kinds of items with my logo on it. And today, I issued a new one. Uh, we've released a third logo today that just came out. It's a dolphin. How can you not love that? Dolphin. It's a dolphin. Uh, we got a dolphin on a logo that we put together. It's in the store. So if you are on my, uh, if you're watching me on a computer, um, you can see the logo for, uh, for Redbubble on the top right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, it's the far right logo. You click on that little red dot there. It'll take you to my online store and you'll see the three logos that I have at the bottom of the bottom of the page. Just click on the one logo you want to see stuff for. You can see it all, of course, but start with one, start with the next, go to the next. You'll see all the T-shirts. You'll see all the clothing. You'll see all the hoodies. You'll see all the cups. You'll see all the stickers, all the greeting cards, all the, oh, and there's just all kinds of stuff. It's great. Anyway, so that was released today. More coming uh, as we go forward here. And I uh, am thanking my friend out there. Uh, he knows who he is. <laughs> but it's a secret. And uh, thank you for all your help. It's just great. My life is so much easier with this. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. The Red Bubble people have been great. Uh, we sold a T-shirt a couple days ago. Uh, Peter Heckema told me he bought it. Uh, it's already shipped. Uh, he should have it probably after the weekend, I hope. And then last night, got an order for a coffee mug. So uh, T-shirts out the door, coffee mugs going out the door. Fantastic. So it works. Uh, Red Bubble works. And so those of you who want to support my channel, help this guy uh, stay on the air. Visit the store and pick up some swag for yourself. <laughs> Wear a T-shirt proudly around the house. And I thank everyone who uh, who uh, makes a purchase there, of course. Um, like Redbubble handles it all. I just get a commission out of the deal. And they do it all. They do everything. They make it. They ship it. They do the returns. They make sure you're happy. They, they handle everything. And uh, I can just concentrate on this and talking to you guys. And that's what I'm going to start to do right now. I'm going to say hello to everyone who's been typing in here already. Peter Heckemo is the first guy in here, and Peter is the, the, the proud owner. He's going to be a proud owner of a T-shirt. I can't wait till he gets it because I want to hear from him. Do you like it? Is it okay? Because I don't know what it looks like until you get it. Peter is saying, hi, Bruce. While I was in Miami, I took a ride down to the cruise port, and uh, the new uh, Royal Caribbean terminal 
for a Symphony of the Seas is 80% complete, scheduled to open in September for Symphony's first November sale. Awesome stuff. New ship, new terminal. <laughs> That's exciting. Peter uh, also was uh, saying only one ship in the port in Miami yesterday, the Disney Magic. Beautiful looking ship, he's saying. Kathy Butler's here. Hi, Breeder. Hi, Bruce. Peter saying hi to Kathy. Uh, Peter uh, Hekema, did you order uh, your T-shirt? Peter is asking. Uh, he's asking if everyone else has ordered their T-shirt. Heather Young, hi, everybody. Um, and I said hi to everybody. Uh, Tim Thomas, hey, guys, 62 in Anderson, California today. Wes Morrison, hi, everyone. 86 and scattered showers here in New Braunfels, Texas. Hi, Jim. Hi, Wes. Peter Hekema, 87 degrees in Tower Pond Springs, Florida today. Bruce, looking forward to getting my PWB t-shirt, traveling with Bruce t-shirt. Fantastic. I can't wait till you get it. Thomas Henry. Hi, everyone. Sunny, 83 Fahrenheit in Richmond, Virginia. I'm driving in my eco-friendly Volt. We will be listening today with no text. Just listening. Thomas, great to have you. And keep it between the lines. Tammy Ray, uh, good afternoon. I bought a travel mug yesterday, Bruce. There we are. There's who did it. I, I knew it was someone in Canada, and Tammy, I believe, is in Calgary. So I have a Calgarian buying a mug. That's awesome, Tammy. I can't wait to hear from you when you get it. I'm curious to see if you like what you see. Uh, Mary uh, Al Myers here. Woohoo! Caught you four days in a row live. <laughs> Way to go, Mary. Nicely done. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time. I'm on tomorrow, but you can make it five in a row. That's awesome. Uh, sea Keeper is here today. Uh, uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. 80 degrees Fahrenheit, damp and windy. We we might get some rain. What the heck is that? I guess you've got too much dust and uh, the rain has been ordered to, you know, wash it away. Nice blue sky after that. And we'll enjoy the outdoors and enjoy uh, enjoy life itself. Man, welcome back, sir. Wendy Thompson is here. 72 is the temperature in Bland, uh, Missouri. Thunderstorms later tonight. Happy Friday, everybody. Hi, hi, Wendy, and welcome back. Nice to have you here. Charlie Baum, it's 80 in Alexander. I know, Char Charlie, you're going nuts. Uh, it's 80. Now it's time to pack for tomorrow's cruise. I know, he's going crazy. He's packing. He's packing. Talk to you in two weeks. Charlie, this is awesome stuff. If you get a chance to say hi when you're on the ship, let us know. Otherwise, you let me know when you get back. and You tell us how it went. I'm dying to hear it. This is fantastic. Uh, you got to be just chomping, chomping, ready to go. Scott Batchy, hi, everybody. Another day, another nice day in Ventura. 72 with a nice breeze. Fantastic, Scott. Wendy saying, oh, Charlie, lucky you. Cam Wilson, hey, everybody. Hey, Cam, how you doing, buddy? Welcome back. Debbie Emanuel, hi, Bruce, and everyone. Lots of sun, 72 in Northern California. How are you, Debbie? How you doing? Good to have you here. Tammy Ray laughing out loud. Tammy Ray, Calgary and four degrees Celsius. Bob, oh, hi, all. 81 in Pelham, Alabama. Go Tide. Welcome back, sir. Uh, Francis Williams is here. Hi, Bruce. 80. It's humid and windy here in Beaumont, Texas. Sailing Sunday on the Carnival Breeze from Galveston to Key West, Florida, Freeport, and Nassau. That's going to be great. Let me know how this works out for you. Fantastic. Tell us how it's going to go. Jim Thomas has sent us a $5 donation. Jim, thank you so much. The green bar right there. That's Jim Thomas right there making a contribution to my cause. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. That is fantastic. Uh, loves to travel us here. She is saying, uh, hi, Bruce, 78 here in Kansas, waiting for the snow tomorrow. From 78 to snow. Not fair. Not right. Oh, man. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce. And everyone, mostly sunny and 78 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. Pamela, welcome back. Great supporter of mine. Jim Thomas. Oh, Deb will get a dolphin. <laughs> oh, Deb's going to get a dolphin. Well, we're counting on it. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to come up with logos that everyone likes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Tom Eaton, 82 and sunny in Jacksonville, Florida. Can't see red uh, bubble on the phone. Any ideas? Yes, Tommy Eaton on your phone. Um, if you're on my, uh, the YouTube channel, on the top there are different categories. It should say something like uh, videos, playlists, uh, and there should be something like about. And if you click on about, that should take you to uh, a page of links, uh, my Patreon link, my, uh, my Instagram link, my, uh, my uh, Twitter link, and the Redbubble link. And just hit, just touch Redbubble, should take you to the store. Cross your fingers, hope that works. Uh, I did it on my phone, uh, should work on yours. Tammy Ray from me. <laughs> uh charles jordan hi all hi charles how you doing paula k hi bruce and all sunny 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 80 plus in hanover pennsylvania fantastic paula k the lawnmowers have begun and yet in kansas they got to put them away they got the lawnmowers out for a bit put them away get the shovels out because snow's coming to kansas unbelievable scott brody 
Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. Five, uh, five uh, degrees Celsius, but in a freezing rain. Warning in effect, St. Thomas, Ontario, not the Bahamas. Darn, you're in the wrong town, but darsh. Five Celsius, but freezing rain warning. Yeah, stay off those roads, uh, Scott. Hey, stay off those roads. Oh, man. Not fun when it turns into a skating rink. You've got a curling stone for a car, and you don't want to be playing that game. Tammy Ray, I, I, uh, I still have over a foot of snow. Still over, unbelievable. Just, you know, so much meltage is required. Calgary just got so much snow this year. It's unbelievable. I'm worried about the flooding. Is there going to be flooding in late April and May this year? Like there was three, four years ago. It was devastating. Cross our fingers. Hope it won't be too bad. Uh, Wes Morrison. Hi, Francis. Uh, we took the same cruise on the Carnival Freedom. Love Nassau and Key West. Right on. Silo's here. Hey, Bruce. Uh, same weather in Seattle. Just replaced the snow with rain. <laughs> 197 days until the Bliss and, uh, and the Haven Club uh, in Mexico. Fantastic, man. I, I was just thinking about the story I was telling you guys yesterday about how Vancouver... Uh, just welcomed in their first cruise ship. That's just north of Seattle, about uh, an hour by air. They just announced that they're doing a, uh, they're uh, launching a daily service, four flights a day, uh, prop plane uh, with the floats. So they're they're taking off from the harbor in Vancouver, landing in the harbor in Seattle, and it's a one hour five minute flight time by prop uh, from one to the other, and they're they're talking about doing it four times a day. And then I was thinking about Vancouver welcoming their first cruise ship of the season and the difference between Vancouver and Seattle. It's just night and day. Seattle is wide open for business. The city has poured money into their port uh, for their for a new pier, a new uh, a new uh, terminal for uh, for the cruise lines. And they've gone after the cruise lines to tell them, you want to do Alaska? Do it from here. We're the ones you want to go with us. And they are kicking Vancouver's butt. Uh, now, the environmentalists in Vancouver, they don't want any cruise ships or they want fewer or whatever. The, you know, fewer is better. You can keep it green. Uh, and then there are business people in Vancouver going, we got to learn how to, we got to get competing here. If we want to have all the services of life, we've got to have people here to spend money, get our share of that action. And Seattle is stealing it. Like It's just like taking candy from a baby. It's so easy. Seattle is just cleaning house. They're going to have over a million tourists this year. I wouldn't be surprised down the road. There'll be one and a half to two million tourists a year going through Seattle. Tons of additional uh, um, venues will open up in Seattle to handle all the tourists. People will go to Seattle two or three days early, stay a couple of days after their Alaska cruise. Unbelievable. Uh, I think it's just a, it's a win-win for Seattle, I think. But uh, Vancouver is just behind the eight ball on this one. They're just so behind uh let's see here uh tammy ray i'm thinking lots of floods that's what i'm wondering tammy in calgary uh with all that snow going to be melting the the uh, the uh, snow the melt the snow melt out of the mountains uh, the foothills coming back to the east through calgary through the bow river oh i'm just crossing our my fingers for you guys we'll see what happens paul okay i feel for you tammy not too much longer stay positive scott brody are the buffets the same on all ships or is each ship different? Scott, Brody, the buffets um, are different and the same. <laughs> What's the same? Well, you grab a plate and go. Um, but um, some ships some ships uh, have like island-type uh, buffet stations where you walk around a little island to pick away at food, and then you go to another one and another one. Um, where others will have just one long, long line that you go along. Um, where and then there's a few where, where they'll have sort of a, uh, they'll have the seating around the outside of the ship. Okay, the back and the outside. The back, say the back half of the ship, maybe back third. And in the middle uh, is the state is the food station because that's where all the uh, dummy elevators are to the kitchens below. Uh, that's where stairwells are for the staff to get down and up um to the cooks and so on uh they'll even have uh, uh service elevators back there for the the cooks and the service staff the, again where do you take the dishes and all this sort of thing um they'll have uh, they'll have uh um different varieties of course i mean they, they, each each cruise line has its own unique style of presentation uh different quality levels as well uh to paint between lines uh, but there's no there's no clear definition. I mean, I, I cannot tell you that the buffet on one cruise line is absolutely better than another. Um, you may find that uh, you take a cruise with uh, Carnival, 
And you'll come home and say, that buffet was fantastic. We had great lunches, great breakfasts, great dinners. And then you may find a year or two later, you take a cruise on, uh, you know, celebrity, and you'll find uh, it's not as good as the uh, one in Carnival. What's the deal with that? Um, it, it varies. Um, uh, some will swear that the more I paid, the better the buffet was. <laughs> and others will say, uh, you know, it varies from meal to meal, uh, season to season, territory to territory. Uh, if you're Caribbean cruising or you're Mediterranean cruising or you're Northern Europe cruising, might be, you may feel it's different. I don't know. I had a friend of mine who was on the Norwegian Jade last year. He went across the Atlantic Ocean from uh, Tampa to uh, Southampton. And um, he said that the, the buffet was average. Was It was okay. But he didn't complain because he had such a good deal on this repositioning cruise that he said to me, if they'd have fed me bologna sandwiches, I would have been happy because I got such a deal on the cruise, I was a happy guy. But I, I'm, a, I'm much more of a picky eater than that. I would, I would have been up happy if I had just bologna sandwiches. But in my case, I was on the same ship, but earlier, I was on the ship years ago with my daughter doing a, a Mediterranean cruise. <clears throat> Loved the buffet. Loved it. It was great. So, uh, you know, one person's great buffet is another person's so-so buffet, or they've changed it. And that wouldn't surprise me because it was a few years between the two of us taking these cruises on the same ship and time, you know, there's adjustments made all the time. I'm worried when I read something like, uh, I read this about a month, month and a half ago. It was a report from a Norwegian. Uh, it was a financial report. Excuse me, folks. Excuse me. Uh, just yawning here. Uh, it was a financial report. Uh, and they were kind of bragging about this. And this bugged me. <laughs> Uh, the, the thing that bugged me about it was, um, they were talking about business was up. Um, we have more ships in the, in the water. We have more state rooms that we can sell out. We have more passengers take a cruise this year than last year. At the same time, we had more people spent We had more money spent on board the ships. We had higher room rates as an overall average. They got more money per night per person. And so everything was up, 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 up. And then they got all proud of themselves. Here's what bugged me. We spent less on food. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? <laughs> you spent less on food? You had more passengers, more ships, and overall you spent less money on food. Now, I don't recall in the last year or two prices of food plummeting at the grocery store where I shop. I mean, even at Costco, they have price increases from time to time. So I don't know where they're getting their savings from. But uh, something tells me that, well, maybe their quality purchases are lower. They're not buying the good cuts of meat anymore they used to buy in the quantity they used to buy it. And that tipped me off to go, ah, okay, I see what's going on here. They're, uh, they're uh, cheapening out. They're going on a lower, lower quality level for food than uh, in the past. Because in the past, we've, we've, we watched reruns of uh, – <laughs> of a love boat and we all remember a lot of us remember cruising 15 and 20 years ago where the food was a lot better than it is now presentation was everything uh the waiters had white gloves on uh it just seemed a better everything you used to be able to get lobster tail in the main dining room without a premium restaurant you used to be able to get a porterhouse steak or you could get a t-bone steak or you would get uh, prime rib even on the buffet. They'd have prime rib on the buffet. Can't get that anymore on most cruise lines on the buffets. They don't have prime rib anymore. They have roast beef, but they haven't got prime rib. And uh, kind of when when I saw that uh, little mm, thing that kind of oh yeah we're we're making all kinds of money for our shareholders and we're spending less on food even though we have more passengers. That's a sign that yeah. The food on cruise ships is heading downhill. And have you folks noticed uh, that you can now get pizza on board almost any cruise ship you want, almost any time you want, and all you want? Have you noticed that by the pool deck on most cruise ships now, they've got the hot dog guy right over there making burgers and dogs and fries? How many hot dogs do you want? Because if, you can, if they can get you to take a, a hot dog on a bun and then add all the toppings on top of that, that's how much food, less food you're going to eat later in the buffet because the body can take in so much energy and so much food and there's a limit. But if you eat a couple of dogs and a plate of fries out in the pool deck, 
you're not going to eat quite as much food in the main dining room or from the buffet. And they'd rather serve you hot dogs and fries or a burger on a bun with fries than serve you a slice of prime rib with uh, scalloped potatoes and, uh, you know, some high-end desserts, that type of thing. It's, it's all planning and plotting it out, trying to figure out how to convince you or get you to steer you over here to cheaper food options. If they can produce pizzas by the pie, you know, at a time, they're constantly cranking out a pepperoni pizza, a cheese pizza, maybe, uh, maybe Hawaiian, maybe not. And you just say, yeah, I'll have a slice of that. And then come back an hour later and you have a slice of that. You're going to put off, you might not have three big meals a day. You might only have two. And pizza by the slice on a cruise ship, 50 cents a slice to make if that cheap. And they're laughing. They're laughing all the way to the banker because they're spending way less money than they would if you uh, were, you know, like the old days, if you were eating like you did before. Uh, let's see here. Debbie Manuel, Scott, they are all a bit different. This is the buffets. Uh, okay, thanks. He says, Francis Williams, hi, Wes. I can't wait to get to Key West. I think I have watched every YouTube video about Duval Street. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Tell Mary Paul, okay, I'm always positive. Right on. Hoping all those floods won't be so bad. Wendy Thompson, Margaritaville at 5 o'clock. Right on. Uh, Silo Steve, attempting to talk to the wife, talk, attempting to talk the wife into letting me go on the bliss for the inaugural Alaska run on May 5 to 12, I would do the solo uh, studio cabin just under $2,000. Any guesses on my chances of her letting me two grand for uh, for a one week cruise as a solo? Yikes. I don't know. I don't know what it is why you'd want to do it. Other than you know, I can see the novelty of it, but the dollars are, are just ridiculous. Um, but hey, uh, the bliss is the bliss. An inaugural is an inaugural, uh, you know, something unique. And if you got the coin, you got the coin. But, uh, uh, you know, um, man, that's uh, that's serious money. That's that for, for a single. That's a lot of money. Randy Lucas, uh, greetings from uh, all from Cozumel, Mexico. He's on the ship there. I'm uh, sunning my, my fat. Uh, you know what? On the beach today, already had animal rescue out here twice, trying to roll me back into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't figure out where the blowhole is, I suppose. <laughs> oh, welcome, Randy. Uh, thank you for the photos today. Uh, awesome stuff. Uh, Tammy Ray, uh, Silo Steve, she doesn't want to go. Um, and I guess I guess she doesn't want to go uh, to Alaska Cruise. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, in, it's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's plus six Celsius. Sunny. What did I miss? Sunny plus six. That's awesome. You, no wonder you're late. You're watching everything melt. Fantastic. Uh, we're just talking about a couple things. Talking about um, talking about buffets, uh, different buffets on cruise ships, how they differ between lines, and how things have changed over the years with respect to the quality of the food. It's gone down on cruise ships over the last 10, 15, 20 years for sure from what it used to be. Yeah, most of the laughing out loud. Scott Batchley. Ha ha, Randy. Uh, Debbie Manuel. Good luck, Silo. And maybe saying... You're just investigating the ship prior to your Mexico cruise, so you'll be a better cruise. Maybe and maybe that'll work. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Could be worth a try, though. Yeah, I mean, what you know, you got to come up with a story to convince her to let you go. Uh, <laughs> well, like, hey, is uh, is uh, laughing. Uh, Scott Brody looked at videos on the celebrity ships, and they look basically the same on the celebrity ships. Uh, well, they've come out with uh, you know three or four or five versions of the same style of ship lately. Uh, with the uh, this with the uh, with the silhouette and the uh, the eclipse, I believe. Uh, uh, but they're you know they get good reviews. Um, so uh, nice line, Debbie Manuel. Hi, Randy. A better pace yourself. Got a few more weeks to go. That's right. Randy is in the Cozumel today on the uh, Princess, a uh, Regal Princess, and then he uh, <clears throat> they head to uh, Florida, back to Miami, uh, probably a day at sea, and then back to Miami, and then. Uh, he stays on the ship for his third consecutive cruise on that ship, heading over to, I believe it's Copenhagen for, I think it's a two week or a 15 day cruise at least, uh, heading overseas. Fantastic. Talk about relaxing and enjoying. Uh, Silo, uh, uh, for your information about Norwegian buffet at the Alma station, the guy cooking may just be a tapenyaki, a tapenyaki chef. Extra good. Yeah, I, I liked, I enjoyed the Norwegian uh, uh, Jade and the Norwegian Epic 
for the omelet station uh, because you can stand there with your plate, watch them make it. You point at the ingredients you want, and they just make it right on the spot for you. You've already uh, got another plate with everything else on it you want. This plate's got the uh, omelet on it, and you're heading to the table, and it's fresh, and it's warm, and just the way you like it. I love that. Paula K. laughing out loud. Randy, uh, Randy Lucas, uh, not me, Debbie E. I'm tough as nails. <laughs> Cam yeah, Wilson, does anyone know if any ships use the pink yum yum sauce uh, with the teppanyaki? I do not know the answer to that question. Has anyone got that one? That's a good question. We'll see if anyone can pick that one up. Seakeeper, the most beautiful, fancy, best presentation and varied food buffets I have ever seen were on Celebrity. But of course, they are a member of, uh, is that Shannon de Rotissier? Is that how I'm going to pronounce that? Chien de uh, Yeah. And, and of course, uh, Celebrity is not known as a discount cruise line. Five, five and a half stars, kind of like Hall in America. But uh, hey, uh, you pay a little extra, you get a little extra, and uh, nothing wrong with that kind of a buffet. I'll tell you that. Silo, considering we're on the Bliss in October, not sure if it'll fly. Uh, she probably won't let them do it. We, we will see kind of easing the idea in. Oh, look at the... At those neat solo cabins with color changing lights and uh, uh, did that last night he's, he's working her he's, he's starting it off the thing i'm thinking about for silo he's got to be careful that that uh you know mrs silo doesn't watch traveling with bruce on the side <laughs> keep an eye on him what he's saying uh you, you be careful silo you know <laughs> don't get caught now <laughs> Scott Brody, uh, see, uh, uh, see, see, keeper. Good to know. As I'm on the solstice, going to Alaska in July. Thanks for the info. Uh, I am sure you are going to uh, love uh, the uh, Alaska cruise uh, on that ship. I think you're going to really love the solstice. Uh, I'm dying to hear about it when you get back. That should be pretty cool. Tracy Dunlop, hi all. Hot, hot, hot in Naples, Florida today. A little overcast now, but but still hot and humid. I bet you it would be Tracy. That that humidity is locked in. If you got cloud cover overhead, it's not going anywhere. You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be in it for a while. Cam Wilson, you're right, Bruce. They're getting us. <laughs> yeah, on the food, they're getting us. Uh, they're you know they're 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 figuring out our pattern. If you've noticed too, uh, on like uh, oh I was on the Princess uh, Cruise Line, the last cruise I took, they had the ice cream station, and uh, you can get a cone or you can get a you know a, a Ice cream in a cup with some, like a sun a sundae, no charge. Uh, it's just you know soft serve ice cream. Uh, you can have as many as you want. Well, if you have one of those, uh, a lot of sugar in there, that's going to hold you back from eating big. Uh, so you got to really pace yourself, and that's what I found. I had to do on the cruise with my wife. I was sort of saying to myself, well, "I'll have breakfast at the buffet, and then I'm going to head over to the spa, and I'm going to spend my hour, hour and a half there, and just get totally relaxed. And uh, when I'm done there, I'll have my shaving done. I'll be all washed up, and then I'll be." Uh, all dressed up for lunch, which will be the buffet after I walk the deck a little bit. Uh, but I made sure to avoid the hot dog stand. Don't go to the burger because you're walking by, you go, smell it. You go, oh, that smells so good over there because the food is just being made right right there, fresh. And you just kind of want to pop over there and get it. But I kept saying to myself, don't do it because if you, you have a dog, you're not going to do the buffet for like another hour. You're going to hold off. And I didn't want to miss my regular you know meal time sort of thing. So I would uh, sort of pace myself. But boy, uh, mid afternoon, you're kind of going. Oh, I could, I could squeeze in a brat first. <laughs> I could squeeze in a brat. I mean, what's a brat? So you know, you go over there and grab one, and you nibble on it, and then you walk the deck to walk it off. <laughs> it doesn't work, but you know, you try, you try. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Tammy Ray saying burger on a bun reminds me of the Flintstones, Flintstones song. From Wilma, yeah, burger on a bun. Uh, how do you like it done? I can't remember the wording for that, but yeah, <laughs> that was a hilarious episode. Used to watch that as a kid all the time. Loved it. Uh, Tammy Ray, Wilma, <laughs> Wilma, that's right. Sea Keeper, I would rather die a slow, painful death than eat hot dogs, french fries, or burgers on a cruise. I don't eat those at home. I remember one guy who grilled colossal shrimp kebabs on Celebrity Century. Nice. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, I would, I, I, well, I can understand why they are doing it, but I would, I really would love to be on a cruise where you're, uh, you're at the pool deck and they got the grill going and they're doing those chicken kebabs with the teriyaki sauce. You know, I, I would love a stick of that. That'd be great. But 
it's preparation time and it's prep time in the kitchen and it's the cost. Uh, if they can get you into a sodium rich hot dog, <laughs> you know, they're buying the uh, the uh, hot dogs in mega bulk from the supplier and they're running them what twenty five cents, thirty five cents a hot dog, and I got to just put them on the roller or just fry them real quick for you on the on the skit on the thing. Um, toast the bun for you and then you put all those cheap toppings on it they're they're sitting there laughing 85 90 cents is their cost to get you into that and give you 30 cents worth of fries uh buck 20 and this guy's paying 130 a night for that balcony up there plus the tipping and the fort charges win the cruise line is winning and uh you know if you got two kids mom and dad and two kids and you're on the pool deck kids are hungry around two in the afternoon hey, grab them a hot dog let the kids have a dog yeah for sure whatever but uh mom and dad got to control themselves because uh you know you're going to go to that specialty restaurant tonight or if you're going to go to the uh, main dining room in the back you may want to order the best they've got on the menu and get your money's worth after all uh you can have hot dogs at costco you know like like Jen and I uh, go to go to Coeur d'Alene and have our hot dogs for a buck and a half there. But on a cruise, don't eat a hot dog. Don't go on a cruise just to eat dogs. You're blowing it. <laughs> but the cruise lines love you for it. Let me tell you, they love you. Wendy Thompson, I would be eating salad and yogurt before we board the ship. And after we're on board, bring, bring on good food. No burgers or hot dogs. There you go. Francis Williams, uh, sea keeper, my husband. Don't we don't eat burgers at home? Uh, but when we get on the ship, he starts eating burgers and doesn't stop until we get off. Laugh out loud. <laughs> he goes with a junk food as soon as he's on the cruise ship. Go, go figure. Uh, you know, at home, he wants the good stuff. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> I did see, uh, I was watching one of Jim uh, Zim's uh, videos, Jim Zimmerlin. He was doing that review it was about the MSCC side one of our favorite topics here and he was talking about the cruise he went on that he didn't like and he had been into the steakhouse at the uh, on the uh, seaside and he and his wife uh, what what they ate he ordered a, a big steak if i recall and he was less than than impressed and it ran him 106 dollars for the charge for he and his wife in the in that restaurant on board the ship and I guess two days later, they were in the Cayman Islands, if I recall. Yeah, I think they were Grand Cayman in Georgetown. And he went into the um, the restaurant right at the pier. There's Margaritaville, and then there's also uh, the uh, the uh, the rock and roll place. Oh, Brucey boy, you're forgetting. Uh, but I think he went into Margaritaville. Um, not the house, not the house of blues. Um, it'll come to me. Anyway, he went into Margaritaville and he ended up ordering a steak there. And the wife had, you know, a lovely dish. I don't think she had steak, but she had what she wanted. She was happy. They loved it. And they walked out of there and he said it was 36 bucks. <laughs> it was more expensive on the ship and he was not happy and it was cheaper on land and he was happy. And I found that to be most interesting. Uh, what's the name of the restaurant, folks? That's after the you know they have the guitars in there and all the rock and roll memorabilia. What am I missing? Is it uh, just right? I don't mind. Someone will tell me. Uh, Cam Wilson, laugh out loud. Are the guys burgers? Are the guys burgers good, Francis? I haven't had one yet. The guys burgers on the Carnival ship, I've heard, are very good. Guy Fioretti's. I've heard good things about that. Um, Francis Williams, Cam Wilson, my husband, think they are the best. Yes, it's Guy's Burgers. There you go. Uh, Randy Lucas, got to go. All beer in, the, in my hand is empty. Randy, I can't believe you listen to us with an empty beer in your hand. What's the matter with you? Get out there. Preserve yourself. Save yourself, man. <laughs> Silo Steve. Uh, Shruce. <laughs> Don't tell my wife about it. Don't let her on to the fact. <laughs> Keep this between us. Oh, my goodness. BH is here. Seems odd to me to order hot dogs and hamburgers on a cruise ship. You can get those anywhere. I mean, yeah, and they're cheap. <laughs> That's right, BH. Michelle Lucas, all day Cozumel Island tour today. Oh, the uh, oh, the guac and salsa. And, and Mexico continues to have my heart. Oh, Michelle, you got to love that. That was a good day today out there. Fantastic. 
Wendy Thompson, hubby has a game of having a drink in every bar on board. He has not, he has not won yet. <laughs> yeah, some of these cruise ships have got too many bars for you to make it. Silo, when I'm on the cruise, I cannot sit still. I walk and I walk. Not I will ever gain weight on a cruise. Wish I could just lay on a lounger by the pool. I wish I could do that. I love to uh, walk the uh, the uh, promenade deck around the outside. I love it. Daytime, nighttime, if it's warm enough. Oh, man, I just love it. The water going by, the watching the foam get created when their waves are made and going all the way down the length of the ship. Gosh, I just love that. Yep, got to be on a cruise ship with a, with a promenade deck. Paula Kate, I'm a cheeseburger fan. And Princess Regal had tasty burgers on the deck. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Hard Rock Cafe. Jim Thomas, you're a savior. You think I can remember? I, it's on the tip of my tongue. Couldn't remember. Hard Rock. Thank you, Silo. You betcha. Jinx. Silo saying jinx. Uh, Tammy Ray, Hard Rock Cafe. You got it, folks. Not even a trivia question. I'm just desperate for the name. <laughs> Jim Thomas, laugh out loud. Tracy Dunlop, Hard Rock. Sea Keeper, Hard Rock. Uh, Chris Baum, Hard Rock. Everybody knows. Uh, Mary Planet Hollywood. No, Hard Rock. <laughs> Wendy Thompson. Hard Rock? Yes, Hard Rock. It was the Hard Rock. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pardon me one second, folks. I've just got to correct my, uh, get my thing to work properly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Uh, when is your next cruise? A silo is asking me. When is your next cruise? Just wondering. I uh, haven't booked one yet. Um, I haven't got anything nailed down yet. Thinking of something October, November. Uh, I will be perusing uh, shortly, uh, probably next month or so. And when I know, you'll know. Uh, but at the moment, uh, right now, all energies are focused on this channel for at least the next four or five months. Um, August will be one year. I'll still be here doing it. Uh, and then it'll be a couple months after that that uh, I'll probably know where we're headed. I'll let you know. You guys will find out. And if we can get together, that'll be great. That'll be really fun. Uh, news. Um, the only news I've got today was an article I picked up uh, talking about uh, a new adventure park in St. Martin. Uh, Carnival and an outfit known as the Rainforest Adventures or Rainforest Adventures Inc., they have partnered up uh, to build a uh, new park in St. Martin. They're calling it Rockland Estate. Uh, I think Carnival put up the cash. Uh, Rainforest is putting up the expertise uh, to get it, you know, to, to supervise it and manage it, and then they're working a uh, financial arrangement on it. Carnival will bring the passengers to the uh, to the park, and Rainforest will take care of them when they get there. Um, there's a they call it a mountain. <laughs> uh, there's a point on Saint Martin that's 1,125 feet above of the above sea level, where this uh, this uh, whole entity goes up to uh they, they've got a uh, quite a number of acres involved in this park and their um their big feature is that they have a 2800 foot long zip line that uh, has a vertical drop of 1050 feet now that's kind of like uh that's like a 100 story building uh in drop in 2800 feet so that is known they call that the steepest zip line in the caribbean uh, it's not maybe the longest ever built in the Caribbean, but it is steep and it'll be quick. Um, they also have a what they're calling a schooner ride, which is uh, an inner tube deal, uh, 657 feet long with uh, curves and straightaways. And apparently it's quite thrilling. Uh, don't know if it's got my name on it. Uh, then they have something called Century Hill, Century Hill which is also a zip line. They say it's 500 meters long, about 1,600 feet, that traverses the mountain's ridge up there, 1,100-odd feet up off the ground. Cost to get in for an adult, 139 bucks. Child, 105 So uh, not cheap uh, to do all of these rides, but uh, something tells me they'll have enough passengers to uh, between the Carnival Line Princess Line, Holland America Line, uh, Cunard, uh, when they come a calling, uh, they'll be able to feed customers and passengers up there to that facility uh, uh, to rake in some cash. So if you're in St. Martin and looking for a bit of a thrill, uh, there's one right there. Um, could be an interesting thing to enjoy. Uh, well, that was my little tidbit of info, info that I found today. 
and uh, kind of enjoyed uh, reading that, reading up on that. Um, Tommy Eaton, do you have any videos while you were on a cruise? I've done a couple of videos already on my cruises, uh, but a number of them are, are photos uh, where I kind of do a, a, a voiceover. Um, I do have some video on a couple of them, uh, snippets here and there. I took a cruise, um, the cruise that I took with my wife uh, from L.A. to uh, Mexico on Princess. I used uh, footage there. This is with the uh, the uh, Ruby Princess. Uh, we went to uh, Cabo and to uh, Mazatlan and to Puerto Vallarta. And I have some footage on board the ship, and then I have some footage um, uh, in uh, Mazatlan because the uh, the uh, the day trip we had there. This is the third, the second time, third time we've been to Mazatlan. Let me think now. Third time we've been to Mazatlan, <laughs> and. Um, uh, my wife and I have got a routine down in Mazatlan. Uh, after we get off the ship, get through that little shopping center, you know, that's right outside the port there. We'll either uh, walk or grab a, a shuttle bus, usually a shuttle bus, right into the downtown core, which is usually free, provided by the cruise line. And then uh, we'll walk to the Best Western Hotel, which is on the, the beach side of Mazatlan. I'll, I'll call it Old Town Mazatlan. And this, this hotel is about 12 stories tall. It was built in the 30s. And it's really cool. It's very Art Deco. And uh, we just love this place. We, we love the look of it. We've never stayed in it. Uh, we only visit it when we're in Mazatlan on a cruise ship. But the deal is, you go through the lobby and you take the elevator, which it can hold four people, maybe, maybe six, but four uh, is about it. And you go right to the top of the elevator ride, gets you to about the 11th floor, 10th floor. And then you have to walk two flights of stairs and you come up to a bar, which is a, they call it the rooftop bar. And then uh, you get a drink there and they give you an, uh, the code to the Wi-Fi, you get a Wi-Fi code. And you take that with you, take your drink with you, go up to the roof under the top of the hotel, wide open. There's a couple of cabanas there you can sit under. And there's a pool up there. Not that we use the pool. It's just pretty to look at. And you're on the top roof, the 360 degree view of Mazatlan, and you've got your drink in your hand and you have a Wi-Fi code. And we use that as an opportunity to get in touch with everyone back home. And we're sending texts and, and emails and catching up with what's going on in the world and uh, spend about an hour, hour and a half up there. Bit of a little breeze up there, which is great, just wonderful. And get the camera out and just look around and get the binoculars. I bring those along. And if you see my uh, channel, uh, of course, the header on my channel, on the very top of the channel, is a picture of the Princess cruise ship from the top of the Best Western Hotel that we frequent. That is the picture looking back at the ship with a bit of a zoom. And it's just beautiful, just so beautiful. We love it. We just love doing that. And it's free. It, I mean, the drink, of course couple of bucks for the beer, whatever. I, I get a Diet Coke anyway. Um, and uh, uh, we just love doing that. We, we'll walk the streets back to the cathedral in, in the uh, the old cathedral downtown and then get to the shuttle bus and head back to the ship. And there's a three-hour, four-hour outing. Virtually nothing. I mean, virtually no cost. I'll buy a Diet Coke from one of the vendors in the downtown area for 60 cents or 80 cents. And... Uh, what a deal. If we're tired, if we can't walk it, if we really were tuckered out, the first time we did it, we had been with some friends and been tooling around. We needed to take a cab back to our ship, which was the Oosterdam the first time. We took a cab back. It was like seven, eight bucks. <laughs> so what? It was great. Love that. So I've done a video of that cruise. Um, I did a video of my daughter and I doing the uh, Jade uh, through the Mediterranean. I did a video of that. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else we've done a video of. Um, I did a video of the Oosterdam with my friends on the first cruise. Uh, I'm just trying to remember if I've done any others. Um, you know, when, when you're eight months into this game and you're 220 videos down the road, I'm having trouble remembering every video I've ever done for obvious reasons. Uh, when you do eight a week, uh, you forget. Anyway, if you go to my uh, page, you can hit the playlists and you'll see cruises that I've done. And then you can watch those. Um, check them out, but they're not as good as I, they would be a lot better now if I made them now. I'll tell you that, uh, cause I made them early on in this, uh, experience of being a YouTuber and uh, it's a little different. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, what is your next cruise? Just wondering, uh, I say, join us on the bliss for Halloween. Silo is saying 
uh, Tommy Eaton, do you have any videos while you're at the cruise? Silo free at sea just got to pony up for a bigger suite. Free at sea just got to pony up for a bigger suite and in the haven too. Free at sea just got to pony up for a bigger suite. Uh, okay, Salo, you're losing me here. Have you upgraded your room on the Haven on the Bliss? Uh, you got to help me out here. Peter Heckema, Hard Rock. Yep, thank you. Uh, Steve Bartley, snowing now, winds uh, windy all day in Greenlee, Colorado. Yep, the spring snow squall still coming. Tammy Ray, yes, he does at Tommy Eaton. Uh, Tommy Eaton, thanks, Tammy. Um, how about some trivia? How about a? Would you like to do a trivia question today? I've got one for you guys. There's only ten correct answers. <clears throat> I got a special message for Debbie Emmanuel. <clears throat> Debbie, don't don't say Tokyo. Don't tell me Tokyo because it's not the Tokyo is not in the answer today. Okay, so just save yourself and don't don't give me Tokyo today. Uh, but let's see what we can do. Uh, <laughs> Steaming Bean is here. He's ready for trivia. Um, okay, here's your question, you guys. It's one answer per entry here uh, at a time. Don't answer with sixteen answers. Just throw me one at a time. I'm looking for the name of cities. So give me one city for uh, for each answer. Yes, yes, trivia they're saying. Okay, here's the question. All right, here we go. Uh, tell me the 10 largest cities in the United States that don't have a sports franchise. Don't have an NBA, an NFL, an NHL, or an MLB. No baseball, hockey, football, or basketball. The 10 largest cities in the United States that do not have one of the big four. Uh, I'm curious to see if you get these. Uh, Silo, no, it's just joking you and Jen could come on, on the bliss with us. <laughs> Which that's free. It's just... <laughs> Silo, thank you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get it. Went right over this bald guy's head. Went right over. I missed it. Uh, sure, they've got the three and fourth person free. Just pay taxes and fees, right? There you go. We'll just get a bigger unit. Yeah, right. I don't think Jen's into that. <laughs> Steaming Bean is saying San Diego. San Diego uh, is his guess. Uh, San Diego. Well, San Diego um, doesn't have anything, do they? they? They're actually now teamless, aren't they? They used to have the Chargers. And they're teamless. We're going with San Diego. I'll put that on there. Um, very good. Uh, because this this quiz I had didn't have San Diego. It was probably when they had the Chargers. But they don't have the Chargers anymore. So that's true. San Diego would be right up there. Probably the largest of, on the list, too. Fort Lauderdale. Uh, sea Keeper is thinking. And I thought that, too. Uh, but they didn't make the cut as far as size goes. And I have a feeling here that the metropolitan area of Fort Lauderdale might be larger than the city itself. And I think on this quiz, city size. This is just a hunch, Seakeeper. Um, Portland, Steaming Bean, they've got the Trailblazers for basketball. So they're good there. Cam Wilson, Orlando, they got the Orlando Magic for the NBA. Uh, Gina Welts Hulse is here. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Gina. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. We're doing a quiz here. It's a, uh, it's a uh, trivia quiz. The top 10 cities in the United States that don't have a big four franchise, no basketball, no baseball, no hockey, no NFL football. What cities don't have it that are the 10 largest in the U.S.? We got one correct guess. San Diego is on the list from the steaming bean. Uh, Jim Thomas is saying, used to be Las Vegas. That's right. It used to be. And now they've got the uh, hockey team and they're getting the, they're getting the Raiders. The Raiders are coming to town in Vegas. Things are happening in Vegas. Uh, Silo Steve, well, you are Canadian. <laughs> uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy uh, Eaton, San Jose. They got the Sharks for the NHL. Yeah, Gina Wells, I everyone. Jim Thomas, Las Vegas. We went through that. Uh, Steaming Bean, Padres. Tracy Dunlap, Fort Lauderdale. Nope. Uh, Iskew Park, Manhattan. No, no, no. We're not going to Manhattan. Uh, Debbie Manuel, good one, JT. Not yet, anyway. Um, Charlie Baum, Padres, Padres, Padres. Is that a town, a city? It's not on the list. We're not help. We're not getting there. Uh, Debbie Manuel, where do the Padres play? Uh, the the San Diego Padres play in San Diego. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, that's right. Oh, that's what you're saying. Thank you, you guys. Uh, geez, I'm, you can tell I'm tired. It's the end of the week. Uh, sorry, steaming bean. 
the San Diego does not count because the San Diego Padres play baseball in San Diego. There we go. The Chargers may have left town. Padres are still there. Very good. I should have known that. I should have known that. Debbie, where do the Padres play? Debbie's saying they don't play in Tokyo. Debbie's telling me, Bruce, they're not playing in Tokyo. They're playing somewhere else. They're playing in San Diego. Debbie, you got, you're good on that one. Very good. Steve Bartley, Riverside, California. What about Riverside, California? Um, it didn't make the top tw top 10. It made the top 20, but I'm only asking for the top 10. Uh, Silo, Steve, Seattle, we have teams, but they suck. <laughs> You know, you used to have a Super Bowl champion team. There are cities in the United States with NFL franchises that have never won the Super Bowl. What are you complaining about? Come on. <laughs> and you're going to get hockey now. You're getting hockey. It's going to be something. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Iskew Park, Honolulu. How about Honolulu? And uh, I'm looking at my list here, and it's not in the top 10. I think it's 11 or 12. It's just out of the numbers. Steve Bartley, Tucson, Arizona. And, yeah, number four city is Tucson. 541,000 population is number four on the list. Uh, Oklahoma City, you got the Thunder. NBA basketball. Uh, Aluni, uh, Aluni, Ulani is here, and she also guessed Oklahoma. Welcome back, Ulani. Steaming Bean, Sacramento. I think Sacramento has a basketball team, don't they? The Kings, Sacramento Kings. Um, Tommy Eaton, Austin. Yes, Austin, Texas, number one. 757,000 people in Austin. No sports franchise. That won't last much longer. That will change. Um, Cam Wilson also. Tammy Ray, Washington. Uh, no, they got the Redskins. They got the Nationals. They got the Capitals. Uh, they got the, uh, the, 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 what are they? The, used to be the Washington Bullets. Now they call them the Washington. They still call them the Bullets, don't they? Um, Cam Wilson, darn it. You beat me by a few seconds, Tommy. <laughs> Steamy Bean, Reno. Reno uh, is not on the list, not big enough. Uh, Tammy Ray, uh, Newark. How about Newark? Newark? Yeah, Newark does not count. They've got the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Steamy Bean, Providence, Rhode Island. No. Nope. Uh, Cam Wilson, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, nope, not Richmond, Virginia. We've only got two down. Got eight to go. This is great. Um, I was thinking this one might might stump a few of you guys. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, not in the top ten uh, from a city population point of view. They used to have the Whalers, though. Anchorage, Alaska, nope. Anchorage doesn't make the list. St. Louis uh, still has baseball, uh, and uh, they still have baseball <laughs> and hockey and hockey. Uh, Boulder, Colorado, nope, not Boulder, Colorado. Tommy Eaton, Harlem, no. No, not Arlo. Charlie Baum, the Wizards. The used to be the Bullets, now the Wizards. That's right. Spelt it wrong, Tammy Ray is saying. Uh, that's right. Uh, you guys need hints? Uh, let's see. Uh, I need eight more uh, cities. The smallest city is 380,000. The biggest city is 613,000. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, no, no one's guessing yet. Uh, two down, eight to go. Top 10 cities with no sport franchises in the United States. Uh, uh, let's see. Coburg, Ontario from uh, <laughs> Steaming Bean. No, sorry. No, Coburg, Ontario. Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. No, does not make the list. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'll give you hints eventually, but I'll hold off for now. Tallahassee. I guessed that when I tried this quiz. No, not on the list. Tallahassee, too small to make the top 10. Columbia, South Carolina, no, no. Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, yeah. Albuquerque, number five at 521,000. That's three down. Uh, we've got Austin, Tucson, and Albuquerque nailed down. We got seven to go. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nashville, they got, a, they got a football team, a hockey team. Norfolk, Virginia, didn't make the cut. Richmond, no. Tammy Ray, I'm done spelling for today. <laughs> Cam Wilson, Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, number three, 557,000 people. Very good. Stockton from Jim Thomas. Stockton didn't make the list. Uh, nope, didn't make it. We got Louisville. We now have number one, Austin. Number three is Louisville. Number four is Tucson. Number five, Albuquerque. Those have been done. The rest are wide open. Uh, Stockton, Myrtle Beach, uh, no. Myrtle Beach, no good. Stockton, no. Myrtle Beach, Memphis. Memphis has um, 
uh, either has somebody or isn't on the list. Uh, no, doesn't make it. Columbus, Ohio, uh, they've got the Columbus Blue Jackets hockey team. Uh, you can't almost, yeah, yeah, I got one. Gina Wells, a Searcy, Arkansas. No, not Searcy, Arkansas. Boise, Idaho. Good guess, but no, they're about a hundred thousand short of the mark. Cam Wilson, Long Beach, Long Beach, Long Beach. Nope. Long Beach didn't make the cut either. San Francisco. Uh, I think they got a couple of clubs. Savannah, Georgia. I guessed that. Uh, not on the list. Nope. Uh, not on the list. Let's see how they're doing. They're coming up with names. Uh, I need the number two city, the six, seven, eight, nine, and ten cities. Um, Bakersfield for you, Randy L. <laughs> uh, no, Bakersfield didn't make it. No, sorry. Um, let's see who was guessing. No, nope, nobody else yet. Uh, let me think here. Um, St. Paul. Uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities. They didn't give it to St. Paul, uh, unfortunately. Um, Haddonfield, Illinois, question mark, from Cam Wilson. Sorry, no, Haddonfield didn't make it. Fort Worth, the steaming bean wants to know. No, nope, Fort Worth did not make it the, either. Uh, Dayton, Ohio, from Peter Heckema. Uh, nope, Dayton, Ohio is not on the list. Uh, uh, Gina Wells is thinking about Hattiesburg, Minis Mississippi. Hattiesburg, beautiful name, but... No, nope, didn't get, didn't make the cut of the top ten cities. <laughs> oh, we got a good one going here. We've got a good one. Let's see what we come up with. San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio has a basketball team and uh, didn't make the didn't make the list. Syracuse, New York. No, no, Syracuse didn't know. Omaha. What about Omaha? Number seven on the list is Omaha, Nebraska. 438,000 people, no franchises. Dover, Delaware from Iskew uh, Park. No, Dover did not make the cut. Sorry. Uh, we're down to uh, five to go. We need five to go. Dallas. Hey, they, you know, they haven't got anything going. Dallas, you know, they have, they have no, there's no sports in Dallas. Rochester, New York. No, nope, Rochester did not make the cut either. Um, Bismarck, North Dakota, I believe you're guessing. No, Bismarck did not make the cut. <laughs> Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, no, does Des Moines didn't make it. No, no. Portland, Maine, maybe. Uh, no, and uh, Portland. Uh, our Portland has a team, basketball team in Oregon. Lexington, Kentucky. No, Lexington was not large enough to make the cut on this list. Uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, not big enough to make the list either. I've uh, got some really good guesses here. Really good guesses. Very well done. Uh, five to go. Cape Fear. <laughs> the Capes. We'll call them the Capes. Whatever the team's going to be, they're going to call them the Capes. Montgomery, Alabama. Nope. Birmingham, Alabama. Nope. Nope. Neither of those cities made the cut either. I think they're just outside. Not by much, but they're outside. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. People are going through their, they're going through their memory. Where would, what cities am I? Oh my goodness. What states don't have franchises, capitals to state capitals, uh, that type of thing. Uh, Cam Wilson, wait, Dallas didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, Dallas didn't make it. Sorry. They were just, uh, too many teams in town. Um, uh, Charleston. South Carolina, no. Charleston did not cut it either. Jackson, Mississippi, no. Hartford, we had already, nope. Debbie Emanuel, Cam Cowboys, the Cam Cowboys, no. <laughs> Washington, D.C., uh, no, sorry, uh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're looking for one. I'll give you a hint. Um, I'm looking for a city in uh, California. And uh, I'm looking for a city in uh, Texas to give you a couple. Uh, Burlington, no. Nashville, they got a hockey team. Um, Nashville, I think, also has uh, – no, Nashville – do they have the football? They got the hockey team. I know that. Um, oh, darn, I forgot about them, Cam was saying. Uh, let's see. We got one in Texas. We got one in California still. Uh, let's see here. San Bernardino, no. Not San Bernardino. Fresno. Yes, Cam, you got it. Fresno. It's number six on the list. 476,000 people. Fresno. 
El Paso is being guessed. Number two, El Paso. Yes, 613,000 people, El Paso. Very good, folks. That's California. That's Texas. Now we got three left. Uh, we've got three left, and I can't really give you – well, I can, I can help you. But uh, Let's see. Texarkana? No. Fairbanks? No. Where do the Simpsons live? <laughs> Springfield? No, not Springfield. Grand Rapids, Michigan? No, not Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, let's see. I've got one city. Uh, I'm going to guess it's in the mountain time zone, but uh, I could be wrong, but I think it is in the mountain time zone. Um, we've got um, another city that might be in central, and we have a third city that's in eastern time zone. Those are my guesses, one in each time zone. Lansing, Michigan, no. Not Lansing, Michigan. Um, the smallest city is 380,000. The next one is 385. And the next one is 433. Uh, Lansing, no. Dayton, Ohio, no, no, no. Um, let's see. I'll, I'm going to read off the winners so far. The correct answers, Austin, Texas, El Paso, uh, Louisville. Tucson, Albuquerque, Fresno, Omaha. Those are the cities that have been guessed correctly. We have three left. Chia, me, bad spelling. Uh, <laughs> Chia. Albany, New York, Des Moines, no. Colorado Springs. I think we got a winner in Colorado Springs. Number 10 on the list. Grand Rapids, no. Again, not Grand Rapids. We have two left to go. One in uh, the central time zone, I believe. One in the eastern time zone. Fort Worth, no, not, not there. Uh, one city has two words. One has one word. Uh, let's see here. Any more guesses? Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Nope, not Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, Key West. No, not Key West. <laughs> Not Key West. Uh, let's see here. Uh, any more coming through? Any more coming through? Let's keep an eye on the guest. People are stumped. I got you guys stumped, don't I? I've got you guys. Uh, two left. Um, let's see if I can give you a hint. Uh, oh, here we go. It's Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wes, you did it. You got one. Tulsa is number nine. Yeah, there's one left, folks. Where is Iggy Pop from? Where is Iggy Pop from? Denver is another guest. Denver has a franchise or two. We have one city left. Uh, 433,000 people in the eastern time zone. And uh, uh, let's uh, – I'm going to say, uh, based on the name of the city, uh, I think they're on the coast. I think they're on the east coast. Uh, let's see if you can figure out the east coast. Leslie's is here. How you doing, Leslie? Uh, Debbie Emanuel, dang, another great question. <laughs> okay, I'm saying hi. Great Falls. No, uh, we're looking for a city on the east coast of the United States, I believe. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going with that. Um, uh, Great Falls. Uh, Leslie saying hi, Cam. Uh, Eastern Time Zone, the top 10 cities without a franchise, without a sports franchise, a big four franchise. We need one left. We have one left, 433,000 people on the East Coast. It's not Harrisburg, not Atlantic City. Uh, Leslie's is telling me it's 80 degrees. Nice. Colorado Springs, we got that. Uh, Pete in Ohio, that was just brought in. Norfolk is not the answer. Uh, Panama City Beach, no. Not Panama City Beach. Tracy Dunlop, Daytona, no. Steaming Bean, Raleigh, no. Charleston, South Carolina, no. No, Allentown. No, not Allentown. Uh, the guesses are coming in now. East Coast City, 433,000 people. No sports franchise. What is it? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see uh, if any more guesses are coming in here for the last one. The last one for the top 10 cities without a franchise. <laughs> this is so much fun. New Jersey. New Jersey, the city of New Jersey, Fort Lauderdale. No, no, Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach, we're there. We got it. Virginia Beach, it is 433,000. That's the list, folks. You got it. Myrtle Beach, Washington, Richmond, Norfolk. It was Virginia Beach. Here are the winners. The, the, the cities are Austin, Texas, El Paso, Texas, Louisville, Kentucky, 
Tucson, Arizona, or I like to call it Tucson, Arizona, Albuquerque in New Mexico, Fresno, California, Omaha, Nebraska, uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia, I'm assuming, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Colorado Springs, Colorado. Those were the answers to the top 10 most populated cities without a sports franchise. Very interesting. Guys came up with some great guesses. Wilmington and uh, Elvis and, and Memphis and Albany. So there you go. That was our uh, that was our little trivia for the day. I thought I'd throw that one in today and uh, we'll have some fun with that. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock, I'll bring some more trivia to the table unless I find a whole bunch of cruise news. We'll see what's going on. Keep an eye on everything. Um, see what's happening. I know that uh, we got some of you folks getting ready to go on cruises. This is fantastic. For you folks who are just joining now or who have been joining the last 10 minutes, I released a new logo today uh, on my uh, on my store, on my store for my swag. You can take a look now at a third logo for uh, the T-shirts, coffee mugs, and everything else that's available on the uh, store that I have, the uh, store through Redbubble. Just go to the upper right-hand corner of your screen and see the logo there if you're on a laptop. If you're on a phone, just scroll along the top until you see the About section of my channel. Hit the About section. You'll get a list of different uh, links that I have from uh, Instagram to uh, Twitter. And Redbubble is in there. Just hit the Redbubble link. It'll take you right to the store, and you'll see my latest logo. It's got a dolphin. It's got a dolphin. <laughs> Hopefully you'll like it. Uh, we had a coffee mug order last night. We had a T-shirt order the day before that, and uh, that's fantastic. So the channel has started. The store has started to uh, offer goods out there. Steamy Beans is saying, I hope that Halifax, Nova Scotia will get a football team for CFL. Leslie is saying Allentown has two minor league teams. One is AAA. Can you guess, Bruce? Uh, Allentown what? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, Pete in Ohio, Wilmington, North Carolina. Debbie Manuel, I am so exhausted. Can't wait till tomorrow's show. I'm off to check out all of the new swag. Fantastic, Debbie. <laughs> check it out. Have a great night, all. Thank you, Debbie. Tammy Ray is here. Have a great day. Jim Thomas, good show. Goodbye, Del Moro. Uh, I'm going to say my goodbyes too. Let's see how many thumbs ups did we get today. Did we do any good there? 27 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. We'll take those. And anyone who can spare one, please throw us a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. We're doing great. I did a, I released a video last night about the update on the Norwegian Sun. If you get a chance, check it out. Uh, that uh, seems to be going over fairly well. It's about 12, 13 minutes long. You can check that out at your leisure. And uh, we'll do that uh, show tomorrow. Uh, Steamy Bean, uh, when Bruce said about, he didn't sound very Canadian. About. <laughs> it's Q Park. Great show, Bruce. See you later. Bye. Uh, Peter Heckham of Salt Lake City. Uh, they've got the Jazz. They've got the basketball team, the Jazz. Provo, Utah has got nothing, but I don't think they have enough population to matter. Uh, so anyway, thanks for joining me today, folks, on the show. Les good night uh, from Leslie's. I was thinking about the show all day long and still missed it. <laughs> Just watch the rerun. Catch up on it there. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock Eastern, and uh, check out the swag on the, at the store and see if you like anything there. In the meantime, this is Bruce saying thank you for joining me. We have 1,747 subscribers. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me on April the 13th, uh, Friday. I'll be on tomorrow, the 14th of April, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Everyone's saying their goodbyes. I'm saying my goodbyes. Catch you guys tomorrow afternoon, and we'll see you. Bye for now.